Lloyd Vehicle Consulting. Still not sponsored by Lancaster Insurance. Maybe one day. Good afternoon. Today is the 22nd of March and this is uh, part four of a slightly shambolic shuffle around the 2024 Practical Classics Classic Car and Restoration Show here at the NEC in Birmingham. I do apologise in advance if I get things wrong, which has happened quite a lot so far. If uh, I fall over, if I get interrupted by announcements, if it's generally a terrible video, I'm afraid that's just the way that it goes on this channel. So here we are at um, the uh, CCA auction preview and um, we're well under, on, underway in here. Hopefully we'll get out in this part but we, we might not. There's lots of stuff here. So we'll start off with this 1974 Rover 2200 SC which has done 11,000 miles. Amazingly there's actually two low mileage 2200 SCs in this particular section. One is in part two or something. Um, yeah, I can't remember the name of this colour now. 11,000 miles from new. Never restored and family owned for almost 50 years. So for a 50 year old car, this is looking honestly quite good. <laughs> it looks very nice, although it's for average, by example, one of those would be maybe you know, 5,000, something like that. It's quite a premium. But we've got a Jaguar Mark I here. Look at those spats. I wonder how you take those off to change a tyre. Lots and lots and lots of wood, typical 50s car. Just a bit poked in the face by the aerial. Yeah, it's a base model, it's a 2.4 saloon. Right hand drive, two owners, under 43,000 miles. Wow. 14 to 18,000. Probably a bit easier to live with is this 1985 BMW M535i, not an M5, an M535i. 16 to 20,000 pounds. This is an E28 5 Series, automatic. Um, yeah, it looks, looks good. But I prefer this, this um, 750IL. I think once you've opened the door, if it's actually open, which it is, I think you might be able to guess why, viewers. A rather nice sort of cream leather interior. It's almost beige. Just takes a colour dashboard, sort of like a burgundy colour. What on earth is that for? Answers in the comments section below. 6 to 12,000. 95, just think it's got a 92, 93 plate, but never mind. It's built for diplomatic service with bespoke features, so long wheelbase, no reserve. Interesting. Something a bit more modern, a 2000 Mercedes Benz um, CL600 C215, this shape is. Very, very, very big car. All sorts of luxury features. The estimate again? Uh, Nine to twelve thousand pounds. Okay, makes sense, I suppose. And an appropriate number plate too. First generation Subaru Impreza. It's like a UK supplied car with that um, number plate thing. Thank you, Autofocus, for being rubbish again. 1999 WRX Type RA555, limited edition, 28 to £32,000. We also spent a very similar amount of money, 28 to £32,000, on this 1979 Porsche 911 SC Targa. I suppose it depends what you prefer. UK supplied right hand drive. That's so cheap of Porsche not to fit a passenger mirror. So cheap. Um, 3 litre Super Carrera Target in Grand Prix white. And no leg room in the back. Never mind, we don't need that, do we? I mean, if people really want to be in the back of your car, you could just uh, 
tell the fob the legs up. Uh, 1988 Lotus XL SE again 10 to 12,000 like so many cars here and is that a base level interior viewers uh, yes but I can't get in never mind Excel SE. No, it doesn't really. Those Rover 3500 tail maps for use. Original MX5, UK supplied one. Is this a kind of like special edition one? It looks very much like it. Yes, it is. It's a Barclay special edition. Barclay Hotel in Knightsbridge, seven to nine thousand pounds. So many special edition and AMX fives. It's crazy. So so many of them. And then we've got another special edition here, with um, yeah, this is the Mazda badge used from ninety one to ninety eight. Also a Mazda back badge as well. Ninety seven MX five Harvard edition, ten to twelve thousand. Like so many cars here. Woolwood. Excellent. We like wood and leather views. It's a feature of a channel. I don't know what I prefer really. I mean, I'll, I'll let someone decide. So I can't tell you that. Triumph TR6. I presume this has got the uh, fuel injected six cylinder in it. Yeah, 73. What does CR engine mean? Uh, I'm not sure. Ask Steve Denton, he knows about these cars. Uh, 50 or 80,000 pounds. Oh, is that an Irish registration? Yes, it is. 1987, very, very late. Rover 3500, Vitesse, twin plan and manual. 80 to 20,000, so we have to have a re registration. Uh, yeah. It's not perfect. I mean, maybe perfect examples of these are now really expensive. I, I don't know. Then we've got another Monteverdi. <laughs> <laughs> Another Monteverdi Range Rover, like that one. But that's got a different grill on it. Maybe the grill's changed in between the model years. I don't know. Right, uh, seven to ten thousand. Again, we'll have a look at the interior from the other side because I'm just trying to work out what's so special about a Monteverdi edition. It's, it looks quite normal to me, but obviously I'm wrong because there must be something going on with these. Uh, yeah, it just looks really normal. Maybe I'll hop the seat, I'm just not sure. And then we've got an Overfinch. I've forgotten that Overfinch actually started modifying classic Range Raiders. Of always associated with much later ones, but here we are. Here's an Overfinch. Um, eight to twelve thousand pounds. I mean, this body is tiling up, isn't it? Really. And that's a um, 86, the very first of the. Prototype Birmingham plate JW. Oh, an LSE Brooklands. It's a very, very late classic Range Rover. This one. Commentary plate. Um, the air suspension seems to be a bit poorly. <laughs> um, it's not like a, pr a prototype really for the uh, P38. These were soft dash. Maybe the doors open. Maybe it isn't. I don't know. Yeah, leave the pens for Pete. I won't steal those. But yeah, very similar dash to the, um, I think, the Mark 1 face of Discovery. So different from the um, hard dash, people call them. Leave those gentlemen over there to open the bonnet on the overfinch. And we'll go down here. Yeah, Vogue LSC. Vogue SE, this one as well. Furthest colour, the cover colour, I would have thought Brooklyn's green would be like this colour, but um, there we go. I wonder why so many cars are these uh, limited editions of Brooklyn. It's the same with the, the Capri 280, although that was an unofficial name. That's also a render of Brooklyn's. That's it's, uh, the name of the colour. Five to seven thousand pounds, an SE, seven to ten thousand. That this one's clearly been on a farm, hasn't it? <laughs> Absolutely, definitely been on a farm. 
Look at all this lichen. It doesn't actually look too bad, it just needs a clean. And the tailgate looks remarkably good. These tailgates are really, really bad for rusting. They're terrible. And then an earlier one here. Not even a Vogue SE, just a Vogue. I hope this is a V8 view, isn't it? Ooh, hardly see the dash in this. Uh, yeah, EFI, so it will be. Um, 85, that one. 91. 5 to 7, 5 to 7. Keep going. Uh, yeah, I mean, how do you decide between all these? It's uh, very special. Tailgate's good. Oh, look at this. This is like super long wheelbase thing here. That is an insanely long wheelbase. Maybe it's based on LSE because that's in really good shape actually. I wonder how much this one is. Oh, it's a soft dash, okay. So it'd be like a 94, maybe? Yeah, it's a 94. X Mike Tyson. Have I seen this before in another auction? I don't know. Anyway, 30 to 40,000 pounds. Um, then we've got this, I think this is a Lotus. No, no, it's not, sorry, it's um, <laughs> it's a Tiger HS6, it's supposed to look like a Lotus, but it's based on a 67 Triumph Spitfire. Okay, I've learned something new today, viewers, um, as we always are. Every day is an opportunity for education. Ooh, 1955, Renault, uh, I think the French would say, Juve 4. I've never seen one of these before. Not UK registered. Where's that plate from? I don't know, you know. I'm not really sure. Goodness gracious me, it might be from, from France, but it could be somewhere else. The Juve 4 was based on a, another type of Renault that I've completely sort of forgotten. Um, but this lasted a lot later than the rest of um, the range. And then we've got a Ferrari. Is this a 400 or a 412? It is a 412 GT. Very nice sort of cream interior. That is, uh, that's good. I've always quite liked these. There's a sort of Ferrari, if I would have a Ferrari, which I probably won't ever have one, the one I would have is this one. Then um, Jetson Interceptors, two of them. This one is a 73 Interceptor 3, 10 to 12,000. But we need some new tyres, don't we? And some way of dealing with this bodywork and all kinds of other things. And it's on a jack stand. Um, let's just be really careful. Let's go around the BMW actually and have a look at the front of the one. Wrapped in cling film. 1968 Jetson FF. 18 to 22,000. It's a partially first year. You can see someone's had a go at sort of grinding off a lot of the rust, but there's still a lot more to do. Let's uh, then move on to the next row, which is this Mini 1275 GT. These are actually really rising in popularity at the moment. One owner from New, it's 1970 on a J. And, oh my gosh. Oh dear, oh dear. We're going to need some serious work, aren't we, on this? But because it's a garage find, um, people like garage finds. That's why it's that expensive. Very early Series 3 E-Type here. It's a bit different from one that I've just driven on Tree Jacket Reviews. This is only estimated at 10 to 25,000. I mean, on the surface of it, it's obviously been storage for quite a long time, but it doesn't look that bad. But I could be wrong. Another E-Type here. This one's going to need some work, isn't it? It's a uh, Series 1 fixed head coupe. Uh, it's, we've got 12 to 15,000, that one. And a very early Calibra, it's a 1990 2 litre 16 valve coupe. 4 to 6,000. I think that would be the red top engine in that. I might be wrong, I get things wrong all the time, viewers, but I think so. Mark Free Cavalier and these are, are both quite good cars actually. 
And then uh, your three point take Jaguar Mach 2. Excellent. Uh, real potential for improvement, 62, 12 to 15,000. Yeah, the paint's just a bit it's dull. It's probably an older restoration, this. And the chrome could do with uh, sorting out as well, couldn't it? And then we've got a another Jaguar 240. There's two of them here. This is a 69, so it's the very last year they made these. This one's sort of missing various bits of chrome work and things like that. We don't have as much chrome as a normal Mark II. But it's only um, two to three thousand pounds. Oh, Doesn't look like there's too much serious structural rust on that. The ideal for, you know, if you recreated one of those old ITC series from the 1670s, where they were pushing um, a uh, white Jaguar off a cliff, it'd be perfect for using it as a stunt car. Wonderful. This is like a Daimler, this one. Be, uh, I think it's 73. So it's 74, Daimler Sovereign. So that is actually Series 2. Um, again, two to four thousand pounds. That really needs a good clean, doesn't it, for a start? And um, you can see if there's any rust on that. It doesn't actually look that bad. I'm not sure really there is much rust on this. I think it's uh, probably mainly just really, really filthy. Short wheelbase, manual overdrive. Sort of specification you like. I Look around the headlamps and see if there's much rust. No, there isn't really. That just, that just needs a clean and some new bumpers or something. <laughs> Not bad. Okay, I think it's the final section of the York, of uh, the auction for us to cover. 1974 Volkswagen Type 2 T2 Camper, 12 to 15,000. That looks pretty good, viewers. If that's all together inside, and it looks like it is, then that'll be a very nice thing for somebody to buy and you know, tour around in and things like that. They're not the fastest or best handling things, but people absolutely love these. They also love the uh, Splitties, 64 Splitty. Right hand drive. UK supplied. Excellent. Can be pit conversion, but it's been restored. That looks pretty good. Another Splitty, 18 to 22, but it's a microbus, 63. And not quite expensive as I thought Splitty would be. 1949 Ford V8 Pilot. 822,000. So, would you rather have the Splitty or the V8 Pilot? The choice is yours. And then a Porsche Cayenne Turbo Tiptronic. Also a 2003, like the one I drove earlier this week, which uh, wasn't a turbo, it was a V8S. And this is 9 to 12. The one I drove was on the market for, for £4,000. So this is a bit nicer, probably. And it's done lower mileage. Actually, this is remarkably good for a car that's 21 years old. Um, we've got more Cayenne action here. Yep, much more modern Cayenne. 15 to 20 is the GCS from 2013. And virtually all the Cayennes, apart from the six other ones, have vast amounts of power. And this has 420, so there we go, from the V8, which was also used in the later first generation Cayennes. Is this an electric one by chance, viewers? Yes, it is. It's an EV conversion, 20 to 25,000 pounds. So you can go around without having to annoy the people in the ultra emission and clean air zones. Um, Mayor of London would think you're wonderful. Not that his opinion matters really, viewers. In fact, it doesn't. We don't like that. Look at this Land Rover Series 2A 88 Canvas Till, 1963, 12 to 15,000. Gosh, you've got some proper filming going on there with, with gimbals and micro and everything. We don't use those on this channel. Um, I think, viewers, possibly this has an engine we can't talk about in this channel, so we'll skip on to something else. How about this um, classic Range Rover? Oh yes, look at this. Very nice inside actually, this. Very nice indeed. With the V8. This is a suffix D from 1977. 18 20, Very good. Now this is something that one of my friends has been telling me about 
is a 2002 Range Rover 4.4 HSE. That is very nice. Estimate four to six thousand. So sensible second-hand reviews money for this car. Obviously, if a lot of things can go wrong. Let me just have a look at um, the interior. It's a bit heavy. That uh, looks all right. Wonder if you've got any dead pixels down there. Um, that's a common problem. Very heavily BMW influence and switch gear in this car. The classic place where these actually rust is um, is on the arches here. And I see this has probably had a bit of welding done in the past. While we're here, let's be kind of sensible and have a look at the other side to see if um, this one's been done. No, that one. Uh oh, there we go. Yep, that's going to have to be done as well, isn't it? Okay, so we've identified the problem there, is but that's not going to take too much to fix, is it? Very nice. Last of the line, L322 Range Rover, formerly owned by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth. And we can't talk about it. Dear me, viewers. Thank you, Mayor of London, and all your friends around the country of the Optical Emission and Clean Air Zones. 2003 Mercedes um, SL350, 10 to 12,000. Very nice. My Ivo is um, on something else. It's this uh, 1981 Lotus Elite S22, sorry, S2.2 Type 83, 16 to 20,000. This time, can we open the door? Yes. Obviously, parts shed with the Excel and things like that, like that uh, door release knob, sort of seat release knob there. But it's a very, very sort of 70s shape with this sort of back end like that. And still Rover 3500 rear lights. Another 911 turbo here. Doesn't look out, doesn't look the speaker view, that'd be bad. Very, very sort of purposeful of wide parking sensors is a good idea. I mean, that'll be very, very fast. This one's got the Tiptronic transmission. Uh, Facelift 996 from 2003. 30 to 35,000 pounds. Oh, this is more expensive. 1982 Mercedes Benz full, so 500 SEC AMG with an appropriate plate, although the silver and black plates on a car from 82 were very wrong. Uh, 1988 BMW 635 CSI Highline E24, 25 to 30,000. I think I prefer this actually to the Mercedes personally. That's just my preference for viewers, don't shoot me. Very, very, very nice indeed, that one. In fact, whilst we're here, let's have a look at the interior. Yes, superb. Just door. I think there is a problem with that door, which I'm just going to leave. Right, 1964 Jaguar E-Type Series 1, would be a 3.8 actually, if it didn't say 4.2 in the back. Sixty-five to 70,000. California Sage. Interesting. This one here looks weird there's something up with this that plate is from sort of a series two or three and it's like a series one so what's happened with this uh 71 e-type fixed head coupe but must have been imported from somewhere else then if it's a genuine series one all the details are correct so most probably hmm Another retype here, 4.2. This one is a Series 2 property of Nigel Havers, a man of excellent taste. Yeah, it's very nice, um, £60,000. Also making good money is probably this uh, Escort Mark II Harrier Special Edition. These were uh, one of three limited editions to celebrate the end of Mark II production in 1980. The Linnet and the... Ooh, is it the Goldhawk? I can't remember now. But look at this. 
35 to 40,000 pounds. Strato Silver, that is, um, it's really nice. It's, it, someone at some point in the past might have been tempted to make that into like an RS2000 replica, but they haven't. It's probably why it's so expensive. But 1,500 miles only. Yes, 1,500 miles. Absolutely crazy. What I think we'll do is finish this part of my cherished vehicle insurance services stand. I've been told to come here. Mr. Hunter from the Jeff Price Cars channel is, in, is inside doing some recording, having a little chat, so we won't interrupt him. We'll just walk past him and see if he notices. Um, 9293 Mercedes Benz C124 with a beige leather interior and wood. Hmm, I do like a nice beige leather interior, viewers. That'll do nicely. I'll take a photograph of that for Mr. Quirk for the Planet Auto channel, actually. So, um, Ian, who is from Cherished Vehicle Insurance Services, owns this Opel Monza GSE, but it's, it's seen sort of better days, but it's a rear end. Why not for rear end in such bad condition? I don't know. Uh, dashboard is gone. Uh, yeah, quite a late one. 1986, this would be actually on a D. And it, it weren't really replaced actually in the lineup. Also got this um, Landra, I think it's a Series 2 or something that they're, they're doing. Let's have a look at the tub at the back, and, and that might tell us actually on the plate sort of what kind of age it is. Uh, yes, yeah, Series 2A, 1969-70. And we'll, we'll uh, just walk past Mr. Hunter in the Renault 10, having a little chat as always. I'm sure we won't even sort of notice sort of what's going on. No, he's not noticed what I'm doing. Never mind. You can't, do, you can't do everything, can you? Oh, he has noticed. I'll let them have a little chat, though, because uh, it's rude for me to interrupt. Right, um, let's go back and um, see what's happened down in Hall 5, because I, I fancy a bit of a rest and some, and some lunch. Unfortunately, viewers, my eye has been caught by something else before Rob might have all five. Look at this Montego 1.6L facelift, 1989. Now, it's not an Austin, actually, by this stage. Austin uh, badge was dropped in 1987, particularly with these facelifted ones. Um, so we've got different wheel trims. We've got this fabric that you can find inside some metros. Still got windy windows, I think, in and out. But that's that's good, it's in very nice condition. I mean, the sort of GSI would be my preference for a facelifted Montego, but that'll do. And we've got a Rover 2000 TC. You can see there's a little weird suspension sort of goes up the sort of sides of the, the bonnet here is where it is. Uh, sort of edgy bay rather than bonnet, underneath the bonnet. That'll be a 768 on an F. And then we've got a Morris Traveller. Yes, viewers. <laughs> Morris Traveller with um, hopefully some upgraded brakes. Because the original brakes, all round disc, or on drums, non servo assisted or terrifying. Oh, I fancy a bit of a picnic now after all of this. I'm going to be hungry. So, same as the uh, Revit 2000, sort of um, 67, 68 on an F. Very nice condition, this one. But yeah, you know, um, I prefer ones with servo-assisted discs and uh, an all synchromesh gearbox, because uh, that's the sort of person that I am. I just noticed we've got a Gordon Keeble in the West Berkshire Classic Vehicle Club stand. I love Gordon Keebles. For a time, these were made at um, <laughs> what used to be called Eastley Airport in one of the sort of hangar buildings. This one, though, I don't think has its original V8 engine in it. Goodness gracious me. Someone's actually done an electric conversion on a Gordon Keeble. Now I've seen everything. Right, well, I'll also recover my, from disbelief. Thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching part four of the Slightly Shambolic Shuffle around the 2024 Practical Classics Classic Car and uh, Restoration Show. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Like this video, leave a comment below and uh, we shall see you again 
in part five for more incorrect information.